Hello everybody, Ben Woodruff here with another falconry video. Today's video I'm going to be comparing goshawks to peregrine falcons. Two very iconic species with a rich history. Uh, before we do though, if you haven't already, if you could please hit subscribe, I very much appreciate it. It does help me keep this channel up and going. Now falconry has been around for thousands of years and every region kind of has a history that fits, right? Maybe you have this area works really well hunting with a hawk eagle on rabbits or maybe this area over here is really good for hunting small birds with sparrow hawks. You know, it just depends. It's almost like the landscape itself and the prey items within that landscape kind of help uh, develop whatever form of falconry you have historically in many of the countries around the world. But goshawks and peregrine falcons are two of the most highly prized raptors used in the sport in falconry, both in ancient days as well as today. And that's because of their incredible capabilities, their comparative loyalty, and their usefulness in a wide range of circumstances. But I want to talk a little bit about these two species. I'm not going to go too in-depth on the species themselves, but I want to talk about them in falconry. What's good about them, what's bad about them, and how they compare. Especially if you're new to this, you might just be thinking of, hey, there's a buffet of, of species here that I can think of. Which species do I like most? And I want to use that for falconry. But you got to think deeper than that. Remember, the general rule in falconry is you're going to have the most success if you use a bird that's native to your area and you hunt it on prey that's native to your area and a prey species that is abundant and a prey species that that predatory bird regularly hunts in the wild. You don't have to do that but that's a guaranteed recipe for success. So kind of knowing the limitations of your geography, topography, and ecosystems can really help. And that's why this video is hopefully helpful to you too to better understand peregrines and goshawks. Now let's start with goshawks. Goshawks are true hawks, which are occipiters. Occipiters is the group of, of raptors that we call the true hawks. They're built for forest life. They have ridiculously long tails, very short rounded wings. This gives them maneuverability and allows them to just dive in and out of brush without breaking any feathers, hopefully. Uh, that's, that's what they're built to do. And they're primarily built to hunt birds. But it's not in a big sweeping dive, it's in a chase. Now they don't have to just hunt birds, they can hunt mammals too, and they do. But that's not what they're built for. They're really built as supreme bird hunters. But it's more like I'm hiding, I'm looking, I'm waiting, maybe I'm looking by a water hole or in the forest or, or a bird feeder in a neighborhood, and then when birds come I just dart out, and chase, 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 and try to catch them. Uh, that's, that would be goshawks. Goshawks have probably a higher frame rate that they can process visual information than any other bird. And that allows them to be able to dive in and out of brush and trees and branches without hitting them. It's really incredible to watch. They have seemingly endless stamina. Most predators, any kind, uh, from lizards to lions, from, from falcons to snakes, though most of them will make an attempt at prey, and then if they miss, they're like, oh, okay, well, the prey, uh, the elements of surprise is gone. They have momentum. I missed. I'm just going to recuperate my energy loss and try again later on another animal. Not goshawks. Goshawks can get up and going and they can miss and the prey keeps going. They're like, nope. And they just go back after them. It's very impressive to see that kind of stamina. A goshawk will hunt all day long. If you have them at the right weight, you're like, hey, we caught something. Give you a little bit to eat off of it. And then we're going to go out hunting again. You can do that all day long. So the numbers of quarry you are able to actually successfully hunt are incredible. A lot of raptors are not that way. A lot of raptor species, they'll, you know, maybe a red-tailed hawk catches one rabbit and it says, I'm good for the day. I don't need anything else. I'm, I'm good. Goshawks can go and go and go and go. That's a very, very uh, alluring attribute about them. They are really pretty easy to get up and going on quarry. There, it doesn't take too much convincing. You give them a little bit of success, have them at the right weight, and they're just like, I'm doing it. We're hunting, we're going for it. That's nice too, because there's some really good species in falconry that you have to really work hard to convince them why hunting larger prey like that is good. And then once they have it, they have it, but not goshawks. It's really easy to get them up and, up and running. The prey base, as a falconer, anything from a sparrow to a swan, Normally what you're looking at though is you're looking at, you know, quail, partridge, pheasants, ducks, kind of that kind of range. And when it comes to ground quarry, you could do squirrels, but there's a little risky they might bite the toes. They kind of have delicate toes. So really you're more going after uh, jackrabbits, hares, and cottontail rabbits, as in addition to the birds I mentioned, which is all great. And hey, if you're going after something little, hey, if a sparrow pops out, go ahead, let your goshawk go after a sparrow. It's all part of the fun. 
that is all well within the abilities of a goshawk. So they're 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 very successful and and wonderful, wonderful birds. But what are the bad things about a goshawk? Uh, goshawks are not very forgiving. Uh, they can turn very aggressive. You need to try to hunt them every single day. That's ideal for any raptor, other than the mole. Usually in the summer months, you fatten up your bird, just let them grow new feathers. But fall, winter, and spring, you need to try to be hunting that goshawk every day. Otherwise, it can develop aggression that'll come out at strange times. Your goshawk might be mantling over a duck it's caught, and you approach, and it leaves the duck and runs over and starts attacking your leg. Like, what are you doing? Eat the duck. So there's a lot that has to be done when it comes to troubleshooting. If you have a goshawk, it's not just I've arrived at my proper training, we've dialed in a, a great system. It's like, no, you constantly have to be adjusting the weight, adjusting, you know, put more food on the lure, less food on the lure. We need to hunt more multiples, or no, we need to today, we just need to hunt one quarry item and let the bird crop up on it and be good and have a really good, you're always adjusting that with a goshawk. Goshawks can uh, have brittle feathers. Now their feathers are bendable and brittle, and I know that seems like uh, it's like isn't that how, how can they be both? But they are, and and so you have to give extra consideration when you're traveling with your bird, when you're housing your bird to make sure how is this tail and these wing feathers, but especially the tail, are they going to bump into something and break, which can be bad. Uh, so that that's a consideration you have to deal with them. But other than that, so a wonderful multi-purpose bird that can hunt all kinds of environments and scenarios. Now, peregrine falcons, by by comparison, peregrine falcons are as famous as goshawks. These, again, these are maybe two of, of the three or four most famous raptors in all of falconry history. These are two of them. These are two heavyweights. Peregrine falcons live almost everywhere in the world. They are, biologically speaking, the most successful falcon species on earth because they have conquered almost every continent on the planet just about. They are built for hunting birds as well. Again, they can hunt mammals, but not like a goshawk. A goshawk is like, I am built for hunting birds. Let's go hunt a jackrabbit. Okay. Where if you were going to try to train a peregrine falcon to hunt mammals, it's not what they're built to do. Goshawks can, peregrines can, but it's more of a survival strategy if there's no other food available. They are not built for hunting mammals. So you're really hunting birds. And again, same thing with a, with a goshawk. A peregrine falcon, in theory, can hunt anything from a sparrow all the way up to a swan, but you're kind of hunting the same size, like pigeon, partridge, grouse, duck, pheasant. That's kind of the range that you're normally hunting. I have hunted geese with uh, one of my peels, well, several of my peels peregrines, actually. But a falcon, a peregrine falcon, almost everybody who flies them, Typically, the way they're being flown is you're going out in the field, and it has to be open country. You want there to be no trees, no telephone wires, no barbed wire, no bushes if possible, just open. And I, hey, there's a duck pond, and I see some ducks on it. Okay, I'm going to go over, I'm going to take the hood off of my bird, and it's going to bob its head, and then it's going to go up upwind and circle up a thousand feet. And then I or my dogs are going to flush the duck off the pond and that peregrine falcon is going to dive hundreds of miles an hour, aim for the head or neck of the bird flying in the air, and it'll hit it and knock it out of the sky, kill it, probably just with that hit, circle back around, land on it, you go over and you pick them up. There is a lot more going on there than a goshawk hunt. A goshawk hunt is typically, I'm walking with the goshawk, there's something, go get it. Do -do 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 -do. Yeah, you got it. Or you didn't get it, come back. That's very different than a falcon being like, okay, we got to orchestrate all these complex factors. And if any one of those factors are off, if it's too windy, or if the prey flushes too soon, or uh, if your bird, it, you know, didn't go high enough and it's, it's, it's out of range and it's doing a shallow dive instead of a steep dive. All of these are factors to get right with the peregrine falcon. And so all of that means... If you're flying a falcon, if you're like, hey, I just want to hunt a falcon from a pitch, meaning I want the, to train it to wait on above me and dive on prey, a peregrine falcon is the best choice, period. That's my, I'm not the end all answer to everything. That's my opinion based off of a lot of experience. If you have a choice of any large falcon, if you want to fly in the style I just said, a peregrine falcon is the best choice. Get a peregrine. If there's any way to get a peregrine, that is the bird for you. Uh, falcons are not easy to train, but 
among the large falcons, the peregrine falcon is typically the easiest to train, meaning the easiest to, they're like, oh, this monkey man on the ground wants me to circle above him and then food appears for me to catch. They get that principle quickly and they're more loyal, meaning they're less prone to wander uh, and self hunt. They are usually very agreeable when they're not be flying. You know, just like sitting around, holding your peregrine falcon, just talking with your friends, socializing. They're like, yeah, we're having a good old time. I'm a peregrine. Or maybe if you had something like a any other big falcon, is any every bird's an individual. Every bird could be amicable and nice and easygoing socially. And you can always socialize the bird and help them become more social. But I'm just saying, as a species, peregrine falcons are typically more naturally social than other falcons, which can be very nice if you want, you know. So a peregrine falcon is a great bird, wonderful bird. My favorite falcon to fly. Not my favorite falcon, but my favorite falcon to fly, both in terms of the ease of the training, the amount of success you're gonna have, and the amount of loyalty that's there. They're great birds. But with all those factors, what are the bad things? Well, what if something happens? What if the wind blows? What if an eagle chases your falcon and they ends up being a tail chase and you have to get out your radio telemetry or GPS transmitters and go for miles to go after your falcon? That's not typically the case with a goshawk. Goshawk is a short flight, they catch something or they didn't. You're not going to the next county to try to retrieve your bird. Um, so again, it is harder, especially in an increasingly modern world, to find slips for, a pe for any big falcon where all those factors line up. That there is prey, the prey isn't spooked yet, there's enough distance, it's not too windy, it's not all these different factors uh, to, get, to get right. It's harder to do for a lot of modern falconers. Where a goshawk, if there's prey, you're good. <laughs> That's almost the only factor. Is there prey that a goshawk can catch? Yes. Oh, there's a river, there's a lake, there's a tree that... So, doesn't matter. So between the two, uh, again, these are my two favorite choices. If I'm gonna fly a hawk, a true hawk, goshawk. If I'm gonna tr fly a large falcon, peregrine falcon. These are my two choices. But if you were just saying, Ben, I'm not telling you where you are in the world, but uh, what uh, you need to do this to acquire food for yourself and the bird, or you need to do this um, we just want you to have the most hunting success you can have. What's your choice between the two? A goshawk. Um, they're both a big, whopping huge headache in different ways. But again, goshawk, more success. But again, between the two, peregrine falcons are forgiving. If you can't fly every day, a peregrine falcon is not going to take that out on you. It's not going to have the aggression manifest in unhealthy ways. A goshawk will. So even though I'm sitting over here saying, I would choose a goshawk and I'm praising it, another point is if you don't have the time to dedicate that much hunting time to a goshawk and field time, and if you don't have the mind to be able to constantly fine tune and adjust and change your training regime with a goshawk, then a goshawk probably isn't a good choice. Meanwhile, a peregrine falcon is a bird that you can just about as close as possible, you can get to be like, well, I got them dialed in. They understand how we fly. I understand the right weight to fly them at. And now we've got everything worked out. We just take them in the field and they blah, 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 whoosh, 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 and do everything. So that's, that's a plus for a falcon. And if you can't fly them every day, peregrine falcon isn't gonna attack your face like a goshawk might. So kind of a quick comparison. Uh, but I just wanted to share a comparison of these two because they are both such iconic species in falconry and because they have such a rich history. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts, your comments, and your personal experiences with both of these species if you had them. Uh, if you haven't already, please hit subscribe. And as always, happy hawking.